This is podcast number 8, which is about chapter 13, the first of the three movement concept chapters that we are studying this week. Remember that movement concepts, like space awareness, are concepts to be understood. They are not a skill to be mastered, like skill themes are. The purpose of movement concepts is to expand the range and enrich the quality of skills in physical education. The movement concept categories, of course, have three categories, space awareness, things like locations, directions, levels, pathways, extensions of big and small, effort, time, force, and flow, and of course relationships of body parts with objects and with other people. Learning tasks in the concepts chapters are designed to help children attain a functional understanding, the cognitive part of the concept as well as the performance part of the concepts. As it says on this slide, children need a wide breadth of experiences with each concept to achieve functional understanding. The wide breadth that they're talking about here is to try to let children explore different movements in different ways on their own and with their own style. Learning these movements give them a fundamental foundation for skills that will be used in games and other physical activities later on in life. When movement concepts are introduced to children, the focus of the lesson is always on the concept not on a game, not on a structured type of activity. It's the movement concept that you're trying to teach the children. And you're trying to teach that concept through getting them to explore the skill themes and movements associated with physical education. The movement or the skill theme is secondary to the movement concept. For the first three lessons, the co-teaching and the Teacher X and Teacher Y lessons, we're going to be working on personal space or space awareness like Chapter 13. The movement concepts become modifiers to the skills as children move to higher levels of performance. They modify the skill or help to pre present the quality of the skill. The levels of skill proficiency that we learned about in Chapter 5 are really motor skills. We're talking about levels of motor skills. They're not included in the movement concepts. The, they are the concepts to be understood, not the skills to be mastered. Once children understand a movement concept, it can be used in combination with other movement concepts as well as in a combination with skills. We are always putting movement concepts and skills together and different skills together at the same time. A functional understanding of movement concepts must be attained before the concepts can be used in skill themes. So we need to teach them the concept first and then the movement. It's important to remember that the concepts represent the quality of the movement while the skill themes are the verb or the action that the students do, the physical action. Many of you have a copy of the movement wheel that came with your textbook or the copy that I gave you on a piece of paper. Both of those are much more colorful than this one is on this particular slide. This is the movement analysis framework for space awareness concepts. So if you look at the purple part of this wheel, that is the space awareness concepts. It's usually green on the wheel. The outside ring of this wheel here represents the de uh, definition of the movement concept. In other words, what space awareness is. It's where the body moves. The second ring, just on the inside of it, lists the components of the concept. In this particular part, space awareness, it's location, direction, levels, pathways, and extensions. The third ring defines the components that we just talked about. So location is in relation to self space, general space. Directions is in relation to up, down, forward, backward, right, left, 
clockwise, counterclockwise, which is a little harder for pre-K and kindergarten kids to get. Levels are low, medium, and high. Pathways are straight, curved, zigzag, and extensions are large and small. The movement concept of space awareness is usually the one that we start with in a physical education program. That's why we're starting with it in the first three lessons at McFeet and St. John's. One of the three, it's one of the three movement concepts or categories. It refers to where the body moves and it addresses five aspects that we're going to talk about in more depth in just a minute location, direction, levels, pathways, and extensions. And again, that was in the second ring of the components. Here are some examples of content that you can teach the students during your lessons in relation to this concept and in relation to other skill themes. It's where the body moves. Self space, general space, that's the first thing that we usually teach the students, as you saw in my lesson, the sample lesson. Directions up, down, forward, backward, right, left, cl clockwise, counterclockwise, low, middle, high, straight, curved, zigzag, and large, small, near, and far. All of those uh, definitions of the components are listed on the movement wheel. And then on the inside of the movement concepts, those outer three rings, you will see the different skill themes in the middle of the movement wheel. As I said earlier, space awareness should be taught at the beginning of the program. Location concepts are the foundational concepts that are crucial to all future learning in games and other physical activities. Direction, levels, pathways, and extension concepts are taught to children a little bit later on after personal and general space, when they can understand the terminology and demonstrate the basic concept. Then we try to combine the space awareness concepts or components with a concept and how that concept relates to objects and people. Self space is the first thing that we tried to teach the students in the sample lesson as well as the co-teaching lessons last week. The space the body can move from a given location without traveling. In other words, I always say to the students, your self space is where your feet are. Sometimes when they're standing on a poly spot, that illustrates for them very concretely what self space means. You can also talk to them about pretending that there's a bubble all around their body where it touches the top of their head and touches the ends of their hands as far as they can reach out to the side as well as it goes underneath their feet. They have a great big bubble that they don't want anybody to burst. That's their self space. And what I just said about the bubble is an example of using imagery with the students. You always want to give them a mental picture of what you're asking them to do, especially at the younger ages. The space within a room or a boundary is what we call general space, and we try to teach them to move and travel safely throughout that room or boundary or what I call a work space or work area is what I usually call general space. It's taught after self space is understood and you teach children to move safely in various ways across that general space, sometimes in pathways, sometimes in uh, directions, sometimes traveling in different ways, and so on. General space is one of the hardest concepts for children to get, especially young children. They can move through general space using the body or different body parts, uh, in directions up, down, right, left, forward, backward, counterclockwise, and clockwise. They can also move through general space or even stay in self space and practice different levels. Uh, it refers to the horizontal levels in space where the body or its parts can move, either at a high level, a low level, or a middle level. It's also some place that we can catch things or manipulate objects at different levels too. Pathways are a little bit harder for pre-K and kindergarten students to get, but it's an imaginary design the body or object makes on the floor or in the air when they're moving. 
either straight, curved, zigzag, and many pre-K students do know what a zigzag is. When these pathways are mastered, the, um, when the straight, curved, and zigzag ideas or concepts are mastered, they can use pathways, like curved pathways, to avoid collisions when traveling through general space. As they get older and they start to play flag football, they'll begin to understand about routes and how to make pathways that way so they can catch the ball. Extension concepts refer to the body parts of or the entire body and the size of movements in space, how we make small movements with our body and large movements with our body. In other words, something like make your body as wide as you can while balancing. The last teaching point is that children find it difficult to learn left and right or directions, pathways, and extensions. You should wait for the children to develop skills that are related to those concepts before emphasizing those more difficult movement concepts in space awareness. That's the end of podcast number eight.